Welcome back to the 18th century Scarlet Witch sewing vlog. Hello lovelies! It's been a really long time since the last video on my 18th century writing habit. Between my very large NDA project and all the hand embellishments I decided to add to the coat, time has just kind of gotten away from me. In fact, I'm not even 100% sure where we left off. Previously on the 18th century Scarlet Witch sewing vlog. Um, it's already gonna be a lot of layers. I live in Georgia, it's hot. And so the other thing is my sleeves are way too big. This is way too big. For the cuff, this is pretty good, but for the actual sleeve, this is pretty disgustingly large. Um, so I'm probably gonna take some off of that. Oh, that's right. Well, this week, we are going to devour this writing habit. I learned some new tricks along the way, which I am so thrilled to show you, as well as lots and lots of hours of hand sewing. And I made a few really silly mistakes. The materials I used will be listed below, so let's just get right into the vlog. The best way to start is by cutting out the fabric. I used a wool cotton blend for the main jacket fabric and I lined it with a linen cotton blend. I also used silk taffeta to line the skirts and to make the facing inside the front of the jacket. Okay, so I have cut all of my pieces out. I have like a huge stack of pieces. There's so many, I didn't kind of think about all the layers and like things like that so like for example for the the pocket bag I had to cut two of each right because there's two pockets and the front facing with also like something like uh, the pocket itself like a lining fabric to go with it so basically I cut a lot of things out and it felt like it took me hours I think it did take me hours and then I took a break and watched a couple videos on pad stitching. I've never done pad stitching before and I was gonna do a little practice piece with my canvas and my wool. Here's the dilemma. Again, I've never really done pad stitching or really any kind of tailoring like this, so I thought any kind of canvas would do like I know historically accurate there are things certain like canvas that you should use which is the horsehair canvas I thought I can get away with regular canvas it's not a big deal and I was watching Bernadette Banner's video I'll link it above and below looking at how malleable that fabric is and just the fabric in general I could tell that this canvas this is just too thick. Like this is not, thick is not even the word. Like it's too stiff. Like this is something I could use as like horsehair braid. Like if I didn't want to do horsehair braid in the hem of a skirt, I could totally use this for that. Or kind of like a facing in that sense. But like watching how that moved and how this, like feeling this, I don't, I'm not confident that it'll be right, and I'm afraid it'll make it too stiff, if that makes any sense at all. So I went ahead and ordered some horsehair canvas from Bias Bespoke. It will be here around between May 7th and May 10th, I think is what it said. So we're just gonna have to hold off on the this part of it until then. So, I'm gonna check in with you all in a few days. If I do get around to adding some detail trim and stuff to my pieces, I will show you then, and then that way I'll have time to practice it and get some, like a good solid tutorial together for you all versus 
last time when it was kind of chaos. I'll see you in a couple days. This will not work. <laughs>
but like <laughs> they're not even so I mean like I think I'm doing okay but I definitely I might like this garment will be practice for me and then when I make another tailored garment someday you know <laughs> hopefully I will be a little bit better so I did it I got my pad stitching done look at that it was really hard okay no it wasn't it was not hard at all it just like I don't know it just was different I'm gonna take this off but now that the pad stitching is done this is probably all I'm gonna work on today and I will be back in a couple days to sew this together, the lining together, and move forward with the more of this costume. Yay! For the embellishments on the jacket, I decided to stitch down the same trim from the waistcoat. Then, instead of adding a sequin here or there, I went full in on the sequin coverage. To do this, I thread my needle through the center of the sequin, then bring my needle around to the outside and through to the back of the fabric. I then bring my needle up to the top of the fabric on the other side of the sequin, and I go through the center of the sequin with my needle to bring it through to the back of the fabric. This creates two stitch points on each sequin so they don't flip or move or readjust or anything and then I just repeat this process hundreds of times until the trim looks how I want it. Cue hand embellishment montage now. Imagine owning the world's greatest costumes by the world's greatest cosplayer of our time. In a once-in-a-lifetime collection, Cosplay Life Videos presents the ultimate cosplay collection. Over 9,000 beautiful costumes. Holiday Bell, Pumpkin Dress, Sally Skellington. The collection can be yours for the small price of a car. Ultimate Cosplay Collections is not sold in stores. Call 1-800-COSPLAY to order while supplies last. Hello friends. So it's been quite a few weeks since I have updated you on my riding habit. I spent a lot of time hand sewing downstairs and while watching YouTube videos in here. And I'm pretty happy with how the hand sewing looks. I did make a new decision as I was doing this. Um, I really wanted to try to pull the black from the wool skirt into this coat. So I have these pretty black rhinestones that I'm going to actually add into the, the design basically. Um, I'll get closer to you. Okay, I'm gonna get some video of me actually doing this, but I will show you right here. So we have some of these pretty like flowers and leaves that I think I'm going to add a rhinestone to just to give it a little bit of a pop of black and add a little bit more dimension. It, even though they're really sparkly and they're really pretty and the colors of these sequins are stunning, it is reading a little flat from far away. So I want to add just a tiny bit of black to it to kind of just give it some dimension and that stuff. So these are not hot fix. So I will be using my trusty old friend Gem Tack. I love this stuff. I do have a video 
on the multiple different ways that I rhinestone between hot fix and just adding it with glue. I also have a video on using stencils or templates for rhinestoning. So I have quite a few videos on rhinestoning actually. Um, I will link them below. Maybe I'll make them a playlist. I don't know, but I'll link those below if you've never done it before. I'm still gonna kind of show you a little bit of how I do it and what I do in this video because why not, you know? If this is an hour long video, I apologize. It'll be well worth the wait. But once we're done rhinestoning all of our pieces, uh, I'll let it dry. And then tomorrow I think I'm gonna sew this up. Obviously I won't get it all sewn in one day, but I can at least start the sewing process. And on Thursday I can continue the sewing process. And then when I get back from Kentucky next week, I will finish it and photograph it and get this video out. So here is to hoping that we can move on from the writing habit. Okie dokie. So here we are, uh, rhinestoning. I'll show you the pocket that I've already finished. And I think that adding the black has been so magical and perfect and it did exactly what I wanted it to. So no regrets. So let's get in to, I guess the rhinestoning. Um, I'll do a little bit and then I'm probably just going to do like a time lapse. Uh, and I probably won't do a time lapse of all of them because let's be honest, that would get really boring really fast. Um, this isn't really a tutorial, but I'll still like tell you a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm basically just taking, I have um, some really old pins and I always save my old pins for things like mock-ups and this. So I'm just dipping my pin into some of this gem tack and then I am uh, like globbing it onto the spots that I want to add rhinestones. I'll do about like 10 and then I will, not 10, probably like eight, seven or eight. And then I just grab a handful of rhinestones and I start placing them. I tried using tweezers for a really long time to do this and they like the amount of time that it would take me to pick up and place a stone was just, it was too much. Like I was like, I'm gonna use my fingers. I don't mind using my fingers. The only problem with using my fingers is they do get a little gluey. So I have to take breaks, which guess what? <laughs> Taking breaks is good. It is very good for you when you are doing like small, tedious, repetitive tasks, you should take breaks. So my fingers getting like glued and sticky is just a way for me to be like, all right, it's time for a break and I'm going to go do something else right now and come back to this in a little bit. So I don't mind it. Um, I also don't mind, again, just like everything about my method. I, it doesn't bother me, you know? So I know it bothers a lot of people. They're like, why don't you use this, that, or the other thing? I, I don't need it. I like how I do things. So I do try to work pretty fast when I do this because um, the glob of glue, this is actually a really large glob, like this is probably too much glue um, because it will probably get dry before I'm able to use it all, which is kind of like wasteful and unfortunate. But this bottle, this is my little baby travel bottle. This is almost out. And I was like, let's just use it up and get it done with so that I can not have three <laughs> opened bottles of gem tack. <laughs> I'm a mess, y'all. I don't actually remember why I have multiple open. I know why I, well, okay. I don't remember why I have three open. I had two open because I, I traveled with the baby one and then I, um, the big one I left at home. That's, that makes sense, right? Like that is pretty much common sense in my opinion. But for some reason I have like two large ones open and a small one open. So whatever, you know? So I'm just trying to use some of them so that I can, uh, have more space for more rhinestones because I do have a lot of rhinestones. Like my whole beading and rhinestoning dresser. Yeah. I have a whole set of behind 
It's a tiny, it's like a kid's size dresser, but it's still like a lot. And you know, just when you think you have enough, I always end up finding more that I'm like, oh, that's a sale. I didn't know I wanted, I didn't know I needed these. I was actually um, planning, I'm, I'm like low key trying to figure out everything I have already for Ariel so I don't have to buy more like any materials. I mean, I bought the lace, but I use Patreon money for that. And that is, um, it, I have an idea and so I'm hoping it'll be successful. But I'm going through all of my like beads and, and embroidery thread and rhinestones and all those things so that I can see like what can I use from my stash for Ariel. Like if we can get to the point where 75% of Ariel is made from my stash, the 1850s Ariel we're going to be working on next. If 75% of that is from my stash, I will be so happy. I am reusing my wig. If you have seen my kiss the girl dress. I just did a photo shoot with it. That's the last photo shoot I'm doing in it because I am going to be selling that. And that wig is going to get a, a soak. So like I soak it in, um, so I'm going to wash it first. So I'm going to take it all out. I'm going to wash it with shampoo and conditioner. And then I'm going to let it soak for three or four days in fabric softener. And then we are going to restyle it. I've had that Ariel wig. That's probably one of the first wigs I ever bought. And I have been able to keep it alive. It's from Epic Cosplay Wigs. And I think I got it in... I got it in 2015? 2014? 2014 is when I got that wig. And I've been able to keep it alive and fresh since. So... That is, uh, yeah, that is what I'll be using for our Victorian hairstyle. I need to do a little bit of research. I've, I've never done like an 18, because it's 1850s. I don't think I've done 1850s hair before. I don't know how crazy I'm going to get with it because I do want to still have her iconic bangs. I think that that's a really important design element so that people know it's aerial. But from there, I'm, you know, I got nothing. Okay, so all the glue isn't dry, so you'll see that there's little, like, bits of white. Um, but once that dries, it will dry clear, and then it'll be good to go. Hello, friends. So, I am back. My hair is bleached because I am going purple. So don't be shocked, it really is me. Tomorrow, likely at some point in the vlog, there will be newer hair. Don't worry, still me. All right, so I am ready to uh, sew this up. I did all the rhinestones yesterday. It only took, I think, two hours maximum. Uh, it was real fast. And again, um, I love it. Like, holy jeez. <laughs> Oh, I didn't need to be this extra, but I did. So here we are. Um, when I decided that I was going to hide this costume for the two to three weeks that I was hardcore crunching on a deadline, I did this. So we're gonna press all of this, and this is the only project I have to work on for the next set amount of days. So I'm just going to press all of this and lay it in piles on the table. I'm gonna take care of this and then I really want to sew the sleeves today. That is my top priority. If there's time after sewing the sleeves, I'll start working on the body. Sleeves first. I plan to hand sew the sleeves into the body. So once I do the sleeves, I will move on to the body and get as much machine sewing done as I can until I hit the points where I just can't do anymore, so.
like to sew things in batches, so I will often pin several steps together and then bring them over to sew. Here I am pinning the sleeve pieces together, and then I will pin the sleeve lining pieces together and sew them. The pattern markings are really important to help make sure that the sleeves are sewn correctly, so don't skip out on marking your sleeves. Place the cuff lining around the sleeve lining with the right sides together, pin, and sew. Sew the lining to the outer fabric at the cuff by putting the lining inside the fashion fabric with the right sides together and stitching it down. Okay, so I have sleeves, but something I want to do before I attach them to anything is fill in this gap right here with some rhinestones. It's on this one too. This is just where I had to sew it up and I kind of like knew this was gonna happen. So I did kind of plan for it, but I still would like to just add some sequins there just to get it all connected. It'll look more cohesive and better. To sew the skirts, I will pin the front to the back on each side and sew them down. Then I will pin and sew the pleats, but instead of tacking them at the bottom like it suggests, I'm gonna let them lay there because I honestly liked it, like the way it looked better than pleating it and holding the pleats in place. Adding the pockets was a little tricky. To start, I stitched the bags together. At that same time, I pinned and stitched the pocket flaps right sides together, leaving the top open so that I could hand stitch that down later. Once they were done, I cut open the slit for the pocket and then pinned the bag right sides to the right side of the skirt. My first attempt was backwards and I had a very strange pocket, so just make sure it's right sides to right sides. After putting the bag in, I hand stitched the pocket flap to hide the opening and then I sewed one snap to keep it closed. I did opt out of buttons for the majority of the garment because, well, aesthetic. Moving on to the body of the garment, I'm going to sew the collar to the collar lining, which is made out of the same fabric. I'm also going to pin the darts in the lining and then the top and bottom facing pieces together.
At some point in this time, I sew the fabric to the lining and then the lining to the right sides of the wool jacket. And then we can flip everything right sides out. To sew the skirt lining onto the skirt, I sew it right sides together. Also, at some point, I stitched the wool outer shell together, but I'm pretty sure it was all over the place with filming, and I just happened to miss filming that step. So here I am, pinning the skirt. Finally, I hand stitched the skirt lining to the bodice lining and then the sleeves into the sleeveables. Alright, so I would say it's done, but it's not. Um, I sewed the sleeve in backwards. You can see this seam here. It's supposed to be on the back. I lined up. This dress form is broken, please don't judge me. I lined up this sleeve seam. You can see. Can you? Yeah. Um, but I did it with the head in the wrong direction. So I have to take them completely off and redo them. Um, and I still am not super in love with this, the fact that this bunches up, so I might top stitch it or something so that it will stay in place. But we do have a coat. This is something I can photograph next week. I haven't decided on buttons yet. I think I'm going to take a couple of pictures and mull it over. Um, either way though, I think it looks really pretty. And I'm really happy with it, especially for how long. I normally get bored of a project if I put it down for too long and then I just don't pick it back up. Um, so the fact that I actually picked this one back up is a pretty big win for me. Here's a little sleeve, not sleeve, pocket. All right, well, I'm headed to Kentucky, so this will have to finish up on Monday where hopefully I can film a bunch, edit a bunch, go for a photo shoot. We'll fix the sleeves, obviously. So I will chat with you then.
much for watching today's video. I do plan to make a brand new hat as well as style a new wig for this costume, probably early winter, so that I can do a snow photo shoot at some point this winter with this costume. And at that time, I will have a, another video up in this series with a new reveal as well. Shout out to my lovely patrons who have been very patient and continued their support through this really long <laughs> project. If you would like to hear more about my 1850s aerial ball gown, please subscribe to my channel. I should have another video coming out about that in a few weeks where I'm going to break down the garments that I need to make for the costume as well as the materials I plan to use and some of the techniques I would also like to incorporate with that costume and I hope to reveal a sketch during that day. Until next time, happy sewing!